Hello everyone, David Charney from eLearning Locker here. You can check us out at eLearningLocker.com. I want to show off a new Articulate Storyline project I've been working on. There are three different examples here, one, two, and three. Uh, imagine the first one here is uh, this three button or three kind of tabs that you might click on to show different, uh, different content in your Storyline or eLearning project. As you can see, the first button is uh, the current selected button. It you know, looks a little bit different. It's got a background around it. Now let's uh, go ahead and click on the third button. And the second and the first and the third and the second and the third and the, you know, any order I want to click on these buttons. And you'll see that that background uh, moves to where I'm clicking. What I love about this is that the background has ease, or more specifically, an ease out. So when it's reaching its final destination, it begins to slow down. Your eye is more in tune to objects slowing down when they want to stop. You know, we don't want an abrupt stop, you know, which is how the user might feel with a linear motion or, you know, the background uh, object there moving at a constant speed and then suddenly or instantly stopping. When this happens, the user's eye, not having any expectation of a stop, can just kind of keep on moving past. You know, if I'm on one here and I click three, if it's moving just at a linear rate, my eye might just keep following it right off of the uh, interface here until I, my eye realizes that the button stopped back here uh, all of a sudden and I got to carry back, uh, jump back. And um, that's not what we want. That's kind of abrupt. That's not a good uh, learner uh, experience. So the second example, say the learner gets a 72% on their assessment or knowledge check or game or whatever it might be. We want a little animation to add some energy, add some focus to the actual score. I'll click 72% right here. And we get just that, a quick animation with ease. In this case, a little bit of bounce to focus uh, even more on the actual percent correct. Now I can click on any of these. Uh, I'll jump to 100%, I'll jump to 15%, 58%, 0%. I'll jump all the way to up to up to 100%. What is great about this is that it's very dynamic. You know, it starts from wherever you are and uh, continues the motion to wherever you need to go. You can even, you know, I'll click, let's see, I'm on 100. I'll click 0 and I'll quickly click 25 or 27 rather so that you can see that it, it doesn't have to like finish getting to 0 before it moves on to the next uh, action. So 0 and 27. So you can see it uh, if I click very quickly it will always end up where you want it to end up. It doesn't kind of glitch or mess up and that's what we want because people do kind of click. You never know how people are going to click and we want to make sure that uh, the, again, the learner experience is as solid as it can be. So a third example, very similar to the second example, I'm going to click this uh, graph one button and each bar will, as you can see, slide up to whatever position I tell it to be. Uh, I actually set it on the button itself, uh, which is a very nice uh, uh, feature for making adjustments quickly. I'll click graph two, same thing, starts from the current position, whatever position it was in, if I was on reset, which is kind of this zero line, and instead of clicking graph one, I click graph two. Again, it won't start from where graph one was. It'll start from wherever it was, which was kind of all, all uh, reset at zero. So again, just like the numbers here, I can just kind of click back and forth between these three, and they will always end up where they should. Another little feature that I added to this is a customization panel. So if you remember, let me jump back. When I click on any of these buttons, it has a, an e, a nice ease, no bounce. Uh, I can come to the customization. I can actually set this to bounce. I can set this to this time to 0.8. And now that'll actually reset all of these. So now when I click on button three, you can see there's a bit of a bounce now instead of uh, a nice slow motion. I'll Set it to linear, too, just so you can see what that looks like. This is, again, without ease. It just moves at a constant speed until it stops. And you can see it certainly changes the energy level a bit. Um, it's uh, maybe not as exciting. Your eye does kind of want to keep going. It doesn't nicely slow 
slow your eye down to whatever the end uh, uh, selected button is. Um, and uh, but sometimes you know this doesn't feel too bad with a linear ease. Now again, I can set this to ease out. And you remember this had a bounce, and now it's got an ease out. So I'll go to zero, I'll go to 100, I'll go to 27. Same with the graph, now that this is a ease out, that might be the, um, that might be the, the feel that you want in the, the motion of any of these buttons. So I wanted to show that this can be very dynamic. It's very easy to reset these things and change how it works. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at how this was put together. So I'm going to show how this works uh, in Storyline and with the JavaScript in another video. It goes into some depth, and so um, you know, I thought maybe I'd split those up and make it a little bit easier to digest. Uh, although I will give a little bit of a, of a hint. This circle, for instance, is a block arc. Um, I've got a whole bunch of states, and you can imagine if I go into the circle, I've got a whole bunch of stuff here. Go to this state if the variable equals 1. Go to the next state if variable equals 2. Okay, well, how do you make the variable equal uh, 1 or 2? Well, that's when you get into the JavaScript. And again, without going into too much detail here, you need to communicate with the Storyline player. You need to get variables that you have in Storyline and set them in JavaScript. You need to use the tween light library, the greensock tween light function, uh, to tell it what, uh, how long to play and tell it where its end position should be and tell it what kind of ease to use. I'm using ease out as I'd mentioned. And then every time it does its little calculations, it will tell Storyline what that new variable is. So if it's one, if it's two, if it's three, it's going to tell this state where to be. Uh, so that's a really quick high level uh, teaser for the for the next video, which I'll go into a little bit more depth, not a whole lot, but enough that if you want to start playing around with uh, the storyline file that I'm updating, uh, you'll be able to do that, you'll be able to follow through it, and hopefully if you want to expand on what I've done, you can do that as well. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe and you'll be notified of when new videos come out. You can check out eLearningLocker at eLearningLocker.com. You can also go to YouTube.com slash eLearningLocker to see all the videos that I have. I've got a podcast called The Learning Guys at theLearningGuys.com. Check that out. I talk a little bit about this on that podcast. Uh, and actually, Nate's, uh, who has the podcast with me, gave me the original idea to use the, the three buttons, uh, the first example I showed, and how to go from one button to the other using a slider. Um, and then I enhanced that with the, uh, the Greensock library so I could have a little bit of ease. So he, uh, he started my brain uh, working on this project, so I appreciate that greatly. If you have any questions or comments or anything, throw them in YouTube. And uh, other than that, uh, happy e-learning.